So with the final curtain call in the latest chapter, the Wano Kuni arc is officially over. And with such a mega arc, or rather a mega saga behind us, you know what we're up for next. Bounties. It's a trend we usually see after major victories for the Straw Hat crew, and especially after Luffy was given his massive upgrade. I'm sure it's only a matter of time until we find out the berries that sit atop the heads of each of the Straw Hat members. And when I say a matter of time, I'm even thinking it may be as soon as the next chapter. Which is why I wanted to get in quick and share with you my thoughts and predictions for the next post Wano Straw Hat bounties. Hello my Nakamatachi, this is Joy Girl, and some of you may know that I have actually discussed this topic before. But with how incredibly long the Wano arc was, and with my video having come out over a year ago, before we actually had any major Straw Hat victories, or even the bounty reveals of some key Beast Pirates members, I thought my video was in need of an upgrade. Now obviously we already know Luffy's updated bounty and he actually got slightly lower than what I predicted which was 3.5 billion berry coming in with 3 billion berry in the series. Which actually makes me wonder whether I should just adjust everyone else's bounties accordingly. Hmm. But Luffy's new bounty ended up being another tricky play by Oda using a big brain move to calculate each of the supernova captains, each of them getting a third of the total bounties of the previous two Yonko plus 90,000 berry. Yeah, look, I'm not going to play with maths and I'm not even going to try to do anything clever with the numbers. I'll leave that to people much smarter than me. And if you're one of those people, then please leave your fun and pun field bounties in a comment below. And even if you're not one of those people, please do let me know your predictions for the straw hat bounties down below. And actually, while you're at it, please give this channel a subscribe. So things get really interesting whenever you think bounties because there are bounties that characters really deserve and then bounties that characters actually end up getting because of funny hijinks or misunderstandings or in-series logic. Now when it comes to the raid on Onigashima though, I'm inclined to say that everyone actually has a pretty fair shot in receiving the recognition for their achievement during the raid because this is one of those wars where the world government actually got pretty much front row seats or at least front row updates on everything that was happening, big thanks to the CP0 agents. I mean, they were paying very close attention, even to the point that they got that updated photo of Luffy for his new bounty poster. And not just any Luffy, but a special edition Gear 5th Luffy, to think that they got that golden shot of the moneymaker right at that perfect timing is pretty impressive and a good indication that they were paying attention, very close attention to everything that was happening. Which then makes things very interesting when when you consider what this will mean for everyone else and their updated bounties. And for me in particular, what does this mean for Chopper? Chopper has obviously been used as a running gag with the exceptionally insignificant numbers due to the world government's misunderstanding of him just being a pet or a mascot of the Straw Hats. And although Chopper was one of the Straw Hats who didn't really get a big fight in this arc, he did use his monster point and for an even longer time, extended to 30 minutes, meaning there was plenty more time for his monstrous form to garner attention. Add that to the fact that he was using this form to hold off Queen, a Yonko commander, Chopper may have actually raised some eyebrows. And as much as I love the gag and wouldn't mind seeing it continue, as we enter the final saga, I do think that things could turn serious, giving Chopper the very respectable bounty, not just 50 or 100, but 50 million berry. And possibly giving him the biggest increase, percentage-wise at least, in terms of all the Straw Hats. That is unless the only form that the CP0 happened to catch was actually his baby Giza form. In which case, I just hope that Chopper's bounty doesn't get hit with a minus. Moving on to Usopp, who out of all the Straw Hats really didn't do as much during this raid. He however did end up making a pretty cool name for himself, typically taking credit for actions that weren't entirely his own, and becoming Uso Hachi, sibling hunter in the process. He was even mistaken to have conquerors Haki, and managed to get some of Kaido's gifters to follow him. Although of course that was largely thanks to Tama. And so while Usopp did live up to the gag of him gaining 
falsely earned notoriety. It wasn't on the same sort of huge scale that we've seen in the past. And I'm also not too sure how widely this new street cred took him. Or in other words, whether the CP0 agents caught wind of it in order to boost his bounty significantly. In saying that, the world government does boost up the entire crew's bounties for their involvement and participation, being in a dangerous crew. And because he is a part of the Straw Hats, which is now a big threat to the world government, I can still see a sizable increase. Especially if he does end up getting credit for taking down two of the Tobi Ropo, whom added up together had a bounty of almost 700 million berry. So I'm going to say that his bounty gets increased to 350 million berry. And in my original video, I did anticipate a much higher bounty of 500 million berry, but that was when I still thought that he would get a much bigger moment, you know, such as taking credit for defeating Orochi, for example. And because that obviously didn't happen, I did decide that I'm going to have to scale it down. But 350 million berry would still be a respectable number and still definitely worthy of being part of a Yonko level crew. I've discussed before how Nami was a refreshing surprise in this arc, providing a lot of emotional as well as actual physical action during this raid, particularly against Ulti. However, with Usopp taking credit for that, I don't know how much the world government will actually attribute the results of the Onigashima raid onto the Straw Hat Navigator. I mean, the chances of them knowing about her new climb attack, or in other words, the fact that she now has the former big mum homie Zeus as her own weapon, the chances of that are pretty slim. But again, given the fact that she is a part of the infamous Straw Hat crew, I think she will still get a pretty big upgrade. And although I initially estimated 266 million berry, given I've had to reduce reduce my prediction of Usopp's bounty pretty significantly, I'll also have to decrease Nami's accordingly. Which is why for Nami, I'm going to guess a post Wano bounty of 150 million berry. And I think that's still pretty damn good. Rook's a character that I feel deserves a much greater bounty than he currently has, especially because of how clutch he came in during Whole Cake Island. But I don't know whether he will actually get this sort of update because he did play much more of a support role in Wano. And even though we know how integral this sort of role is in battle situations, for example, Brooke really allowed Robin to shine, getting her one-on-one -on -one with Black Maria whilst he took care of all of her underlings, and then also carried the Straw Hat archaeologist to safety afterwards. But unfortunately, I don't think all of this will amount to much in the world government's eyes, or at least when it comes to updating his bounty. However, he will of course still get recognition for being a part of a very dangerous crew, and so he will have to get an increased bounty accordingly. But basically, I think that Brook will just get the equivalent of participation points, raising his bounty to 233 million berry, giving him 150 million extra berry just through pure association of being a part of the Straw Hats. And again, this is a tad lower than my initial prediction for Brook. But back then, when I shared my thoughts on this topic, I thought Brook would still be a part of a pretty big confrontation. And given that never happened, I think this is still a very reasonable update. Now, if I said Brooke was a character that deserves a much higher bounty, then don't even get me started on Robin. How this girl got an astoundingly high bounty at such a young age, and then that essentially stagnated once she became an adult and a true pirate is honestly beyond me. But I'm hopeful that her involvement in the raid, especially taking down Toby Ropo member Black Maria, who has herself a 480 80 million berry bounty. I'm hoping this means that Robin will also get a big bounty increase. So I'm going to stick to my guns and repeat my prediction of a bounty of 330 million berry. I think this is a fair number where the world government recognizes her involvement in being part of a new Yonko's crew, as well as taking down one of Kaido's top officers herself, whilst also not hugely blown out, in hopes that they can still try to conceal the incredible threat she poses due to her polyglyph reading abilities. Also, I still really like the idea of her getting Sanji's current bounty before his gets updated. I can just picture him trying to bond over this. Robin Chan, we have the same bounties! Of course, before he finds out to his dismay that his has already been updated and possibly even usurped. But we'll get to that in a little bit. I'm really excited
excited to see Frankie's new bounty because I, like the cyborg man himself, was super disappointed that he didn't break through the 100 million berry bounty ceiling post Dressrosa. But given his role during the raid, as well as the overall threat of the entire crew, I am sure he will pass the 100 million mark in his post Wano bounty. His opponent Sasaki had a 472 million berry bounty after all, and Frankie got to display his suite of flashy toys throughout the raid, even using his black rhino to run over Big Mom herself. So this on top of his very impressive one-on-one -on -one, and then general straw hat crew points, I think this will get him an upgrade to a 300 million berry bounty, which is only slightly lower than what I predicted last time, but that's because since my video we then found out the respective bounties for each of the Tobiropo, which wasn't information that we were privy to when I last made predictions for everyone's bounties. And then we found out that Sasaki has a lower bounty than Black Maria, so I'm just going to have to adjust Frankie's update accordingly. Now, this is where we start playing with the really big numbers. And I actually think that Jinbei deserves more than this, but that's not always how bounties work. So I'm just going to stick to my initial prediction of 760 million berry. It's a nice round number, and it adds an extra zero to his first bounty from when he was with the Sun Pirates. Also, I think it is a pretty good reflection of his achievements during Wano. He defeated Who's Who, who had... Okay, try saying that 10 times really fast. Who's Who, who has a bounty of 546 million berry, but then Jinbei did that pretty easily, and then had enough gas left in the tank to come to everyone's rescue with the fire situation. Not that this will all be recognized by the world government, mind you, but still, it serves as a pretty good indication of where Jinbei is heading in terms of bounty land. I mean, obviously, he didn't fight a Yonko commander, so he probably won't reach the billion berry mark, but he'll get pretty close to it. Which is why I think the 760 million berry mark is a fitting and fair call. And now, here we have it. Zoro and Sanji. The wings of the Pirate King. The two monsters who each defeated a commander of the fearsome beast pirates. Both of whom have bounties over 1 billion berry. Does this mean Zoro and Sanji will also reach these very tall heights? Well, like I alluded to earlier, we were in a terrible funny situation recently, but due to his involvement in Toto Land and Zoro's marked lack of involvement, Sanji's bounty surpassed that of Zoro's much to the swordsman's ire and much to the straw hat chef's glee. Now, while I did think that this was hilarious and I wouldn't mind seeing more of this comedy play out, I do think Oda might bring balance back into the world post Wano, increasing Zoro's bounty above that of Sanji's. Now, for some reference, I should note that in my last prediction, Prediction, I predicted a 1.2 billion berry for Sanji and 1.7 billion for Zoro. And some of my reasoning behind these admittedly huge and arbitrary numbers was that for Sanji, 1 plus 2 equals Sun, and for Zoro I felt that he would need to surpass Luffy's previous bounty. And I do actually still stand by these numbers and the reasoning behind them, but at the same time, now that the Wano arc has finished, and especially after getting Luffy's bounty, which again was somewhat lower than I initially anticipated, I do wonder whether I should adjust Zoro and Sanji's bounties accordingly. And while I would love to see both of the Pirate King's wings reach the 1 billion berry mark, and I think it would be fitting as they would now be considered the commanders of a Yonko, at the same time I can also see Oda going quite extreme in his payback to Sanji. Previously, Sanji could gloat that he had a higher bounty than Zoro, but if the roles are to reverse now, how cruel would Oda go? Would he go so far as to show Zoro not only getting a higher bounty than Sanji, but also hitting that sweet 1 billion berry mark while leaving Sanji in the dirt? in the tracks of the 900 million ranks. Because this is a scenario I could legitimately see happening. I mean, just picture Sanji being so happy to be on the same level as Robin one minute, and then incredibly depressed about not only losing that status, but then also losing to the Marimo as well. But if that was the case, I don't think it would be a huge difference between them. I mean, probably something like Sanji getting 930 million, and that's just an arbitrary number so that I could add a three in 
there for Sun, for Sanji. I mean, what the hell? You could say 933 million. And then accordingly, Zoro could hit the 1 billion mark square on the dot. This could really start a new war between Zoro and Sanji fans though. And also personally, given where we are in the series, so close to the end game, I would really love to see both of these boys getting across that 1 billion barrier line. I mean, we are in the final saga now, so realistically, how many more bounty updates are we going to get? So let's just celebrate 1 billion berry bounties for both the Pirate King's wings, and we'll say 1.03 billion berries for Sanji, and Zoro gets a 1.2 billion berry bounty. And both of these are obviously, again, lower than what I initially predicted, but again, I think this is more proportionate to what we saw in the series, what King and Queen's bounties are, and of course, what Luffy ended up getting. But anyways, these are my predictions for the post Wano Straw Hat bounties, which actually, I do have to admit, I came up with quite haphazardly. But anyways, it's always a lot of fun to discuss, and I would love to hear your predictions, so let me know by leaving a comment below. Please do subscribe for more One Piece discussions. You can also join the Joy Fleet Discord server, or even become a Patreon member. And I do want to thank all our patrons for help supporting the channel. This is Joy Girl, and I'll see you again soon.